it appears that Erica Mena is starring in her own version of Groundhog Day. For the youngins, that's the name of a movie from the 90s about a man that keeps reliving the same day over and over and over and over again. So how does this relate to Erica? Well, she has a history of being engulfed by drama, and her relationships tend to follow the same patterns over and over and over again. Many people believe that a lot of the tomfoolery she experiences could be avoided if only Erica paid attention to the red flags that be hitting her upside the head. We're about to take a deep, dark dive into other people's business. We won't be discussing every single thing that has happened on her reality TV shows. Here at RRG, we don't do a bunch of show recaps. We like to add substance to our content by uncovering information that isn't widely known. Before we go any further, be sure to scoop up something to munch on at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of barbecue bacon jerky, cookies and cream popcorn, and gummy sour bears. To get a better understanding of the way she navigates through relationships, we have to take you way back. Why? Because studies have shown that a person's upbringing and childhood experiences affect their adult interpersonal relationships. Erica was born to a Puerto Rican mother and a Dominican father on November 8, 1987. She told Vlad TV her mom gave birth to her behind bars. While her mom finished her three-year sentence, Erica was under the care of her older sister since her dad was too busy in the streets and eventually got deported back to the Dominican Republic. When the burden of taking care of a newborn became too much for her sister, Erica was placed in foster care, where the unthinkable happened. When she was five, her mom was released from jail, but things didn't get any better for Erica. She continued to be mistreated by adults. In her memoir, which we've linked for you in the description box, Erica wrote that when she looks in the mirror, she sees someone who's damaged, hurt, and confused. She added, I see someone who has trouble sleeping at night because the little girl inside of me is still afraid of the dark. She struggled through school and was diagnosed with dyslexia. In her memoir, she wrote that she was placed in special classes with other students with learning disabilities. She started modeling at an early age, and after winning a J.Lo lookalike contest, the modeling and video vixen opportunities started rolling in. Her first music video was for the Philly hip-hop group The Young Guns when she was just 15. During her days on video sets, she observed other women doing something strange for some change. So, clearly, that type of environment wasn't suitable for a young girl her age. After her high school sweetheart lost his life in a case of mistaken identity, Erica dropped out of school in the 11th grade and put all of her focus on appearing in music videos. She was hired as the lead vixen in a Nina Sky music video. Fat Joe was on set, and he brought along his right-hand man, Raul Conde. 16-year-old Erica was wearing an outfit that had a deep plunge neckline that exposed her navel, and 32-year-old Raul, who wasn't aware of her age, was eyeing her down and admiring her stomach. He put his phone in her hand and told her to put her number in it. She was still grieving the loss of her childhood sweetheart, so she dodged Raul's calls for two months. She even changed his name on her phone to Terror Squad Don't Answer. Looking back on those early days, she knows it was her intuition trying to tell her to run, child, run. She continued appearing in videos for artists like Chris Brown and Fabulous. She even appeared on XXL Magazine as their eye candy of the month. And keep in mind, Erica was still only 16 at the time. She wanted to celebrate at a nightclub, so she and her friend told the bouncer they were 21 to get inside. While there, Raul called, and this time Erica answered. He told her that Fat Joe wanted to talk to her. When Joe got on the phone, Erica claims that, although Joe was married at the time, he was trying to spit game by telling her how good she looked on XXL. Erica cut the conversation short and told Joe to put Raul back on the phone. Now, looking back on the incident, Erica can see how Joe might have felt disrespected. At the time, he was one of the hottest rappers in the game, and she curved him like he was a regular Pookie and Ray Ray. Raul figured it was his time to seal the deal. He told Erica he was a Miami, but would be flying back to New York to pack a bag, and then he would head out to Puerto Rico, and he wanted her to join him. Erica agreed. She told her mom she had to leave for a job opportunity, and Raul whisked her away on a private jet. 
Erica admitted she was never attracted to Raul, but she appreciated how he treated her. Raul allegedly had a troublesome relationship with his mom, so he found stability in the unconditional love that Erica gave him. At her young age, she took on a nurturing role and provided him with the love and affection that even she hadn't received as a child. Erica said Joe was bothered by their relationship because he wasn't used to seeing Raul so sprung over a girl. In her memoir, she wrote that Fat Joe's jealousy grew stronger and stronger because Raul was so focused on her. She also speculated that Joe was probably still in his feelings about how she turned him down during that first phone call. Fat Joe allegedly told Raul that he needed to choose. He could either be down with Terror Squad or he could be with Erica. Raul chose Erica, which meant he was allegedly cut off financially from opportunities with Terror Squad. As the honeymoon phase wore off and Raul and Erica struggled to make ends meet, Raul allegedly became more controlling. During an interview, Erica said once she opened up about her past and what she had gone through, things in the relationship took a scary turn. During an event for women who've gone through similar experiences, Erica said Raul put his hands on her for years and she blamed him for turning her into a monster. In her memoir, she wrote that she was used to being disrespected and talked down to, so she was able to handle his behavior at first. But then things escalated and he would put his hands on her out of nowhere and unprovoked. As their relationship deteriorated, she always wondered if Joe was somewhere laughing at her for picking Raul over him. She and Raul moved to Los Angeles to get a fresh start. He built an identity outside of Terror Squad, and Erica was flooded with more work opportunities. During a night out, she had a makeout session with a woman, and when Raul saw what was going on, he was livid. He told Erica the only way she could fix the situation was to invite the woman back home with them. She eventually severed romantic ties with Raul. They ended up at the same club one night, and that's when the infamous incident went down, where Erica beat the brakes off of him. In her memoir, she wrote that she reacted that way because he had put his hands on her in the club before she went off on him. She moved back to New York and received help from her family to take care of her son. She had a brief fling with Drea. Then she moved on with DJ Envy. But after dating for years, she experienced the ultimate betrayal when she found out he was married and living a double life. She went on to date several other people in the industry, including some of her love and hip hop co-stars like Rich Dollars and Sin Santana. In 2014, she started dating Bow Wow. They got engaged that same year, and the rapper told People Magazine, I wanted to be a better man than my father was. This relationship has definitely changed me as a person. Almost immediately, the internet started clowning the couple. Some people said Erica was too much woman for Bow Wow, while others teased them about their living situation. Bow Wow reportedly bought an eight-bedroom home in Atlanta. His mom occupied the top two floors while he and Erica lived in the basement. He told People Magazine he liked having his mom nearby. If he wanted to see her, she was only a few stairs away. Before the wedding could happen, Bow Wow told Hot 97 he encouraged Erica to quit Love & Hip Hop because her behavior affected the shows he worked on, including CSI. Erica agreed to step away from the reality show and focused on planning their wedding. But like most of her relationships, drama got in the way. Erica was constantly beefing with Bow Wow's daughter's mother, Joy. In an Instagram post, Erica accused Joy of being jealous that Bow Wow put a ring on it. Erica wrote, I had to deal with stalking and nonstop late night text from her begging him to leave me as we laid in bed together. I prayed for her, little does she know, to finally move on. Naturally, this caused a lot of unnecessary tension between Erica and Joy. Bow Wow later revealed that because of their beef, Joy didn't want their daughter around Erica, and that's when Bow Wow had to put his foot down. He told Vlad TV, For me, I'm not choosing nothing over my baby. Erica suffered a miscarriage, and when she shared the news on social media, Bow Wow said he had had enough. He claimed it was one of the many reasons he didn't want to be with her anymore, while Erica blamed their split on Bow Wow constantly playing mind games with her. Erica moved on again and began dating Cliff Dixon in 2018. 
Erica found herself amid yet another tumultuous relationship when, in October of that same year, she and Cliff were both locked up on domestic charges. That relationship ended, and sadly, in March 2019, 32-year-old Cliff lost his life outside of an Atlanta bar. Two months after she got locked up on the domestic issue, Erica got engaged to fellow love and hip-hop star Safari Samuels. Yes, she went from getting locked up with Cliff to getting engaged to Safari within a span of two months. So was their engagement a publicity stunt? They got married in October 2019, and they welcomed their daughter Sapphire in 2020. In May 2021, while pregnant with their second child, Erica filed for divorce. What came next was a series of allegations. Erica accused Safari of infidelity, while he accused her of destroying $50,000 worth of his property, including clothing, sneakers, and motorbikes. Erica gave birth to their son Legend in June 2021, and then it appeared that she and Safari had reconciled. They even spent Halloween together as a family. The happy times didn't last long, though. Safari was spotted out with Joe Button's ex-girlfriend, Kaylin Garcia, and he had a brief relationship with a woman named Kimbella. And their divorce was finalized in September 2022. Safari was ordered to pay a little over $4,300 per month in child support. Not all of this financial burden with my children is on me. What? This is not fair. During the November 2022 Love & Hip Hop Atlanta reunion episode, Erica stated she had to pull herself out of a very dark place after the demise of their marriage. She said she couldn't believe how Safari treated her, despite him knowing everything she has gone through in the past. She added, It's weird that he knows the traumatic experience of being a single mother once, and then he turns around and makes me a single mother twice. It appears that Erica is stuck in a cycle of toxicity, but it's never too late for her to break free. We hope that she's taking the necessary steps to end the dysfunction so she can move on and be the best version of herself for the sake of her children. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to follow us on TikTok for more content, like daily news updates and mini documentaries. And as always, thanks for watching RRG.